So only what people can see is above that surface. But what they can't see is with, with the work that's been done, the root system, is, the, the know-how, the process, the humility, the way you guys handle it more than anybody can see. One step at a time. Right? But the root system's in place. The root system's in place. It's week number eight of this National Football League season and time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones alongside Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys play the San Francisco 49ers. It's Sunday night football this week and uh, coach uh, two teams that have uh, been plagued by injuries a little bit. You're coming off the bye week. Uh, what can you expect out of a Kyle Shanahan coach team? Well, I think the big thing, too, is, I mean, where they are in the season, you know, just to, to make those adjustments and so forth. But, you know, offensively, um, they're, they're really staying true to their to their scheme. Uh, I think the diversity on first and second down is is top notch. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle the perimeter, you know, adjustments that they have to make. Uh, their defense is, this year has really kind of gone back to what they were in prior years as, as far as the um, way they're calling it, you know, schematically. Uh, but it's still built on that front four in Fred Warner. So uh, so a lot of similarities. Uh, I think the special teams is something you'll see the, probably the biggest adjustment for both teams as far as uh, the new players involved, both for us and, and for them. But, yeah, there's uh, really a lot of carryover from last year. When uh, you specifically look at the San Francisco offense and Brock Purdy, uh, what a start to his career he's had. What is it that you've been most impressed with with Purdy? Well, I tell you what, I, I think just like anything, uh, you know, when you do, when you evaluate the quarterback position, it is the way he plays the position. I mean, he it, he plays like he's been playing, you know, quarterback since preschool. I mean, he really has an under, high understanding, and instinct, and awareness. Uh, totally engaged and uh, has the command of the offense that you, that you look for in a veteran type quarterback. So I think for as young as he, as he is, um, and really the amount of, that he's played in such a short period of time, uh, very impressive the way he operates. You know, the interesting thing about him statistically this year too is that he's run for 17 first downs oh, yeah. this year. Oh yeah, no no doubt. I mean, you, you have to, and it, it'll sneak up on you because I think so much is you know made of the dynamic you know, Playmakers that they have, you, 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 you can fall asleep on him. But no, his ability to move in the pocket very quick, um, very instinctive, uh, has a really good feel for the, the rush lanes and, and things like that. But yeah, he he's definitely makes a lot of plays with his feet, both throwing it and running it. You know, uh, they've been without Christian McCaffrey this season. They, they're balanced on offense. And Jordan Mason, the guy who's filled in uh, for McCaffrey, has three 100-yard games this year. Yeah, definitely. Jordan looks really good. And I, I think it's just really the commitment and the details in, in, in their run system. You know, just the, the wide zone, the, outs, you know, the one cut. And uh, I think it really, like any good run game, it really starts up front. Uh, but he, he does an excellent job getting to that second level and has been very productive. Just a really, very, very consistent run game. Uh, I think it's definitely one of the – most consistent run games in the game right now. What's the what's the big thing coming off the bye week and self scouting? What's the big thing you feel like the defense needs to be focused on? Well, really the whole team self. Uh, you know, we've had a chance to identify, you know, take a hard deep dive into all the you know all the areas, and, and really the most important you know filter and sort that you need to go through is the techniques and fundamentals. So we just can't have enough of it. You know, we we're, we're green in some spots on our team. Uh, defense and offense, I think there's a lot of similarities in, in that in that focal point. Uh, so you know whether it's young players or it's new veteran players that are, that are or veteran players that are new to our program. So just getting everybody connected. We just need we, we need to play. We need to practice. We need to, the intention of practice needs to be as high as it's ever been, and uh, we just need to improve from within. And that's been our focus all year. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore, the Dallas Morning News. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant, was brought to you by Blockchain.com. Invest like your icons with Blockchain.com. Ford, your North Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by Blockchain.com. Invest like your icons with Blockchain.com. The Mike McCarthy Show powered by Reliant Energy continues here inside the Globe Live studios. Bill Jones now joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. 
It's a big game for the Cowboys. Cowboys need to get back on the field after a bye week. It's also a big game for the 49ers. You can make a case that, that this is a game that could set the tone for the rest of the season for both of these teams. Oh, I believe so. And, and you look at it, you know, it's a dramatically different game than when they faced up there one year ago. That game was for NFC supremacy. Uh, that was determining the early season pecking order on who the top competitive teams were likely to come out of the NFC. This year, much different for both teams. Uh, Dallas coming off that 38-point loss at home. Uh, it, this has been a long, long bye week with a lot of things that have seemed to happen going into this game. But for all of that being said, you could argue the more desperate team going into this game is San Francisco. It's a home game. They've lost a lot of their key players. Many of their key players aren't expected to be back in this game. They've already lost four games. If they dropped a home game to drop to five, they're in a really precarious position the rest of the way. So this is a still significant game, but from a different part of the standings looking at it than it was one year ago. Two things they do have are those edge pieces, as yeah. Mike McCarthy calls them, and that would be Nick Bosa and Leonard Floyd. Cowboys, the uncertain status of Micah Parsons. We've seen what this defense has been like without him. How much are they missing Micah Parsons? Yeah, San Francisco just so good in the front seven. And, and, and Dallas, you know, part of it's – defensive DNA in recent years has been its ability to force turnovers and make big plays. You're not seeing that now. They rank last in the league as far as turnovers. A big part of that is Micah Parsons not being in there, uh, not having his pass rush, not having his speed, not having his play, not having his big play ability, if not just for himself, but to create opportunities for those around him. That's really been missing. Um, yeah, did, San Francisco has the edge there with who they have in place. D Dallas has to be better on first and second downs, I think, uh, because the, the, there's just no way to compensate for what they're missing with Micah Parsons if he's unable to play. The lack of success the Cowboys have had uh, the last three years, three meetings against the 49ers, how does that play into this game? Well, that, that's a factor here. Like I said, the, these are both vastly different teams because of injuries and, and in uncharacteristic territory based on what we've seen uh, the last three years. Uh, but yeah, this is, I, I hate to go as far as to say the bane of their existence, but I mean, San Francisco has been the team that has kept the Cowboys from advancing in the postseason beyond the divisional round twice. And uh, then when they went up there last year to break through, losing that game at Levi Stadium 42 to 10, uh, was a significant blow to them. Uh, they both, you know, Dallas needs to reverse that. I think this has become something of not just a physical, but a mental hurdle for them. All right, David Moore, we appreciate it. And up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, we check in with a nine-time Pro Bowler, Zach Martin. This segment was brought to you by Blockchain.com. Invest like your icon with Blockchain.com. This segment is brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort. Proud to be the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. Please game responsibly. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Time to check in with a Cowboy veteran. 11 years in the NFL, 9 of the last 10 years, he wound up in the Pro Bowl. That would be one Zach Martin. Biggest challenges against the 49ers. Um, you know, they got some. They got some really good players, like everyone else in the league. But you know, what we've been talking about the last few weeks. It, at the end of the day, it's really about us and what we do out on the field. And um, so that that's really what we're focused on. It's been a, you know, it's been a good kind of switch up. Obviously, um, been here a while, but being able to get. Um, my hands on the young guys and try to help them as much as I possibly can and um, just kind of paying it forward I guess from when I got in here and guys were helping me out all the time and um, just making sure everyone's on the same page. Oh yeah, I mean that, that's that's the challenge, right, is just to be as consistent as possible, right? Like um, that's kind of something that I've hung my hat on since I've been here is 
um, you know, a consistent player is, is more important than anything. So trying to just um, be as good as I can each week for the team. I think I'm most proud of just uh, the amount of games that I've played and, the, you know, the, the little amount that I've missed. Um, you know, I think I've missed, I don't know how many exactly, but maybe eight to ten games in my whole career. And, um, you know, that's something I pride myself on is being available. I mean, I think every offensive lineman would tell you that uh, run blocking is much more fun. You can kind of be, um, you know, obviously the uh, – the aggressor in that situation, sometimes in pass protection, when you do it over and over, um, you know, you react and sometimes those defensive guys, but um, definitely a run blocking. Advice I would give to my younger self, take care of your body early, even when you feel good. I think that's a big thing that I've learned over time and that I think our young guys do a great job at is, better job than I did when I first got in, just putting the time in, extra time in for your body, even if you're feeling good. So here's what Zach Martin and the Cowboys are facing on Sunday night. Will McClay here to break it down both sides of the ball. Let's start on the offensive side. Let's start with the running back, Jordan Mason. By the way, from the Tashard Choice School of uh, college running backs that played at Georgia Tech, and Tashard was his position coach. All right, here we go. Look at you lose McCaffrey for a while. What do you do? You go get an undrafted guy. Uh, who fits the system well. They do a great job here of moving. Now it tells the front where to go. They're changing the, they're changing the call, going the opposite direction. Now his ability to stretch and then have the vision, the blocks are set up. Now get through it. Second level. This is where he's dangerous at. Uh, and we've got, you know, it takes six guys to bring him down, so we've got to rally around the football. All right, and you got another example here of Jordan Mason here. All right, we'll take another great look at it here. Again, it's the patience of the back and then the contact balance. Here you go, you have him. Okay, they're going to go motion. The angles of the blocks are set up. The pace of the back sets it up, and then he's able to cut off. And then when he gets an open field, that's 230 pounds making a man miss. All right, how about uh, George Kittle, five-time uh, pro bowler, one of the best blocking tight ends in the league? No question. Not only because of his tenacity, because of how smart he is. We'll look at it right here. All right, they're going to go in motion again. We talk about the motion. They got two guys in motion. It sets up. Now, he waits to see who the guard gets, and then he adjusts his path, and then the back follows him positive rushing you. All right, you see how smart he is there and in the receiving game as well. Yeah, here you go. All right, they're going to run a three-man concept route over here. He's supposed to go to the pylon. But what they do is they screw up the coverage. The DB cuts him off. He goes underneath and follows the ball and works to the back path to the back pylon for a positive play. All right, on defense, uh, we talk a lot about Fred Warner, and there's a reason we talk a lot about him, right? Yeah, one of the best in football, extremely instinctive. We'll look at it here. Talk about the middle linebacker. You talk about their feet matching the backs. And so that's why we've got a little graph here. But watch his feet and watch the back's feet. Back, he stays inside out and he just runs it with the running back and makes a great tackle. And Fred Warner is another guy who that peanut tilling, that peanut punch, uh, he's a master at it. Very, he? very accurate with it because the number one thing you got to do is you got to close space. You got to be close enough and you got to know when to throw and be violent with it. Here, they're going to run a screen. He gets it, and then that exact punch on the ball, creating turnovers. That's why he's the one of the best in the business. And Will McClay, one of the best in the business as well. And Mike McCarthy returns in just a moment as the Mike McCarthy Show continues. This segment was brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort. Proud to be the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. Please game responsibly. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now. Bill Jones rejoined by head coach uh, Mike McCarthy. And uh, coach, coming off the bye week, uh, you know, last year your offense really got on a roll coming out of the bye week. And uh, you've talked a lot about the across-the-hall stuff and the self-scouting. Uh, what, what do you see offensively right now uh, that where you can improve on things going forward here? Really, just uh, pivot off what I said earlier. I think the, the biggest thing is the is the fundamentals and techniques, and I, and that's probably the most important thing that comes out of the cross the hall because it gives it gives the players an opportunity to hear from a defensive coach for an offensive player and vice versa on how they're viewed, you know. And so it, a lot of the coaching emphasis is reinforced uh, from you know the, they're obviously their position coach, but just really staying you know true to that. But it's it's really what comes after this, you know. It's it's the continued communication uh, to see the carryover, 
week to week. But, you know, if you want to go pure statistics, uh, A, number one for our whole football team is we need to win a turnover ratio, and that, and that has not happened. I mean, our, our ball security, you know, as far as protection of football is, is is not where it needs to be at all. So that's that is priority A number one for the team, and and we got to we got to take the ball away. You know, we're we're in position, almost close to the numbers where we've been the last two years, which we've been exceptional really the last three years. You know, we were back to back, led the league there in what, 21 and 21 and 22 as far as takeaways. We we want to get back to that level. Uh, but you know, ball security is is a number one priority for our football team. Yeah, you, know, you, you look at this 49ers defense, and you look at the heart and soul right in the middle there yeah. in uh, number 54, uh, Fred Warner, and what he's done throughout his career. In fact, he's only missed one game in his in his career. He's been his durability, the playmaking ability. What is it that stands out the most when you see Warner? Well, I, I think like anything, you look at you look at a linebacker, you know, a Mike linebacker, number one, commanded that commanded the defense. You know, he's the quarterback. He is all that. He handles the checks. Um, you can see that he's directing traffic out there. You know, their scheme and is you know, there's not a high volume scheme, but there's a there's a ton of adjustments that they make within that. And he, he's the director, um, excellent run player. You know, he's definitely a, a really good uh, pass rusher in the combination. There's a lot of combination of stunts with him integrated with the D line, and I think you know his his probably his biggest quality, and they put a lot on his plate, is in pass coverage. I mean, they, they he commands the middle very well, you know, whether he's a thief, you know, or a lurker, a spy linebacker, whatever, whatever what your terminology is, is, you know, taking out the, taking out the crossing routes uh, in their quarters, you know, you know, every Everybody's trying to get a one-on-one -on -one with him, as, as the, we call it, the three-piece uh, component within the coverage. You know, I think he's excellent there because you know he has a lot of a lot of length and uh, has the ability to make plays on the ball. And then, you know, and he's a big playmaker as far as punching the ball at. You know, I mean, their defense is uh, really high on take, taking the ball away, and he's a leader in the in the clubhouse. Yeah, he's got four forced fumbles. All right, Tyler Guyton back at practice uh, this week and. Uh, Hands full for everybody this week when you look at the edge rushers, Nick oh, Bosa yeah. and, and Leonard Floyd on their side. Right? Yeah, it doesn't get any easier for Tyler, that's <laughs> for sure. Like, but, like mean, every it, week it's somebody. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be better for it at the end of this. But, uh, yes, uh, Floyd, Floyd, I mean, it's just the best – this could be probably the best combination of, of rushers, you know, whether, you know, either either side because they both, they both flip. But, uh, you know, a lot of experience against these guys. That they're, they're, they're outstanding. We obviously got to be smart with – with our help, um, but you know, most importantly, we gotta we gotta win the second and third reaction. You know, it's the ability to have the pass protection long enough so our perimeter can, you know, get in space, get the ball in space, and and probably most importantly, we, we you know we need to run the football very well in this game. All right, then we wrap up the Mike McCarthy Show when we come back in just a moment. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. Final couple minutes here of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. I'm going to do something a little bit different, Coach. Uh, normally I have an unsung star. I've got an unsung position I want to talk about, and that is the fullback position in this league. And when you look at this matchup here, right. you got you Kyle Juszczyk, an eight-time Pro Bowler for San Francisco. I love what Hunter Lipke, uh, in fact, when I won't look at, I don't want to compare players, but when I look at Hunter Lipke, I see those same kinds of, of uh, traits. Uh, and it's kind of a throwback, too, to the old Dallas-San Francisco games of the 90s when you had Daryl Johnston on one side, Tom Rathman, Tom Rathman on the other uh, side. Uh, I, I love seeing the fullback involved. I think this might be your best segment. <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, yeah, just great respect for the, for the old veterans in, in, the, in those days. I've uh, studied those two back offenses you know, religiously, frankly, in the 90s. But, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I'm hoping it's a passing of the torch from Kyle to Hunter is, <laughs> is, is, my, is my hope. But, yeah, just the way they, they use Kyle in San Francisco, um, you know, it, it's, you know, 21 personnel. You know, you know, their starting point is two backs, but they get to all the one back, you know, uh, concepts. They get to all the empty zero back concepts. And I, I think that speaks volumes when you're able to do that with your fullback. And, and we have the same faith and trust in Hunter to do that, too. So, but, but uh, yeah, that's an that's a excellent, excellent outlook. And uh, and Lipke, by the way, averaging 13 yards a catch. He's got the he's got the skill set to go down the field. Too. Oh yeah, no yeah. no doubt. Hunter's done a lot of it. You know, statistically, when Hunter's on the field, we've been very productive. All right. Good luck against those uh, 49ers oh, yeah. on Sunday night, and we appreciate all of you joining us here for the Mike McCarthy Show. And we will see you again next week when the Cowboys will be hitting the road for Atlanta. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant is brought to you by 
blockchain.com. Invest like your icons with blockchain.com. Ford, your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And to watch more Dallas Cowboys content on your connected TV, download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV.